News reporter Trish Hartman is live outside police headquarters in Lakewood with reaction today. Trish, what are you hearing? Well, Nydia, we spoke to people in this tight-knit community who are still shaken after Friday's events. Police believe the string of crimes was all committed by the same person who is now in custody. And, uh, Justin Flansbaum was preparing for synagogue on Friday evening when his wife made a startling discovery outside their home on Galassi Court. My wife ran into the house and said, uh, call, call the medics right away. Somebody's passed out on a front lawn. It turned out to be his neighbor, and he wasn't passed out, but hit by a car. I bent down, and I grabbed his hand, and I saw blood coming off of his forehead. And I said, Moshe, everything's going to be okay. Hatzalah's on their way. And he grabbed my foot, and I kind of just stayed there with him until, until the medics came. Man, anybody could have made that mistake, man. <laughs> I mean, look. How many stories am I going to do with some sun man riding up on, on the lawn and mowing somebody down? And I, I don't catch everything. So this is the new thing now. And now it's like you're not even safe on a lawn. You're not even safe on the sidewalk. <laughs> And I kind of just stayed there with him until until the medics came. That man was critically injured and sent to Shore Medical Center. Police say this is one of four crimes committed on Friday by the same man. Police arrested 27-year-old Dion Marsh of Manchester, New Jersey. His charges include three counts of attempted murder, carjacking, and bias intimidation. Somebody was busy. <laughs> What was he doing out in this town, man? What was this brother doing out there, man? And why does it only take one, man? One son, man. Hey, that's what that's all the earth needs, man. That's all this, the solar system. Y'all solar system needs one son, man. So I guess that's what I'm telling, man. One son is doing everything, man, here on, on, on planet Earth. So, I guess <laughs> all it takes is one son to ruin your neighborhood. Man, my man got, he got Floyd. Rayshard Brooks and Jacob Blake hold cr criminal careers in one day. <laughs> God. Police arrested 27-year-old Dion Marsh of Manchester, New Jersey. His charges include three counts of attempted murder, carjacking, and bias intimidation. It started around 1.15 when police were called to the area of Martin Luther King Drive and Pine Street in Lakewood. Police say Marsh assaulted a driver and stole their Toyota Camry. Over the next seven hours, police say Marsh also struck two men in different locations with his vehicle and stabbed a man in the chest. Two of the victims were left in critical condition. Officials held a press conference Sunday following the arrest. We're working around the clock, obviously, with our uh, federal, state, and local partners. Um, we will be going into the upcoming holidays uh, with extra patrols working as well. Now, according to the Anti-Defamation League of New York and New Jersey, the suspect made anti-Semitic remarks during his arrest. Dion Marsh has a detention hearing set for Wednesday morning. We were not able to locate an attorney for Marsh today. For now, he is locked up in the Ocean County Jail. Reporting live in Lakewood, New Jersey, Trish Hartman, Channel 6, Action News. Nydia. Daniela Keith, as you can see, it is dark out here now, but the couple you're about to hear from says an armed robber didn't even wait for nightfall to strike, and now they're hoping that their story helps get him off the street and also keep other shoppers vigilant. Well, basically right where that uh, white car and that truck are, but except that was our red car and it was a white truck. Man, you glad as it's taking it on the chin, man. <laughs> Good God. 
If this was a fight, we just stopped it. <laughs> Throw in the towel. <laughs> no standing eight count. We just stopping it. You're done, man. <laughs> and so is your country. Well, basically, right where that uh, white car and that truck are. But except that was our red car, and it was a white truck. An open Kroger parking lot in the middle of broad daylight with multiple security cameras and a security guard. Might seem like an unlikely place for someone to commit an armed robbery, but that's no longer the case for George Pulliam and his wife, Rocia Salazar, as of March 29th. I drive over here immediately, and I find my wife in tears right around 4 p.m. I was a scatter for, for everything. The couple says a man who Salazar noticed inside the store on West Belford and Post Oak followed her out and struck when she went to put the grocery basket back a man so you know like i want to help man i want to get this guy off the streets man so i need a little bit more help though because we're gonna we're gonna form an arc nation vigilante group we're gonna look for this guy man who we looking for man just a man, because if it's just a man, there's about 200 million men in this country. Can you give us just a little bit of information so we can whittle it down? So we just, because technically, by the, the description, I could have done, <laughs> I could be charged with this, because, I mean, I'm a man. I mean, Larry Bird could be charged with it. You know, like Jason Lee. I mean, Mel Gibson. I mean, who, a man. What do you mean, a man? What are you talking about? The couple says a man who Salazar noticed inside the store on West Belford and Post Oak followed her out and struck when she went to put the grocery basket back. This guy took my purse, opened the door, took my purse, and I, when I tried to do something, he showed me the gun. According to the family, the thief stole about $1,500 worth of merchandise and also got away with private information. I don't know if this guy is going to call me back to take my car and shoot me. Amid their ongoing fears, they have a warrant for shoppers everywhere be careful uh you're not when you think you're safe just because there's security cameras and stuff outside that ain't good enough not anymore wow i'm speechless man he stole my thunder be careful. Uh, you're not, when you think you're safe, just because there's security cameras and stuff outside, that ain't good enough. Not anymore. It appears the suspect's crimes didn't stop here in this parking lot. The couple says that they learned he tried to use their stolen credit cards at other stores. If anyone out there has any information, they're asking you to call police. Reporting live on the southwest side, Devin Clark, KPRC2 News. Devin, thank you. Mary and Preston, uh, the neighbors, they say they heard up to a dozen gunshots and then watched as a crowd of people jumped in their cars and sped away. Well, the killer was one of those people who made a quick escape. As officers formed a line to scour the cemetery grounds for shell casings and other evidence, stunned neighbors tried to process the deadly violence they'd just witnessed. I heard six quick gun shots. I walked up a little closer and saw the crowd dispersing. And about a minute later, heard six more gunshots. And then that's when everybody got in their cars and took off. Other neighbors say a crowd of 50 or so people turned frantic as the bullets started flying. And people were just running, getting in their cars and taking off at high speed. Kent police say a man in his late teens or early 20s was shot and killed after a dispute between groups erupted in gunfire. All right, man, we got our first context clue. Man in his teens was shot after a dispute between groups erupted in gunfire. So, we got groups at a, 
at a cemetery, man. So that means they come from a very violent community, man, where people are dying. And then just the presence of two groups of these group of this 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 type of person in the same vicinity <laughs> leads to gunfire. So I think we know who this is in Kent, Washington. Even though the people who live in the neighborhood surrounding this cemetery. I'm not from that group. <laughs> Kent police say a man in his late teens or early 20s was shot and killed after a dispute between groups erupted in gunfire. Some neighbors wondered if the shooting is connected to a funeral that took place on Wednesday. But they say large crowds can be a common sight at Hillcrest Burial Park. There's always people out paying their respects. Big groups hanging out. Well what does that tell you about your community? When there's always, like in Kent, Washington, this is not like major city there's always groups hanging out at the cemetery showing their respects in the morning always there's always people out paying their respects big groups hanging out well sometimes groups will get there and people will argue rival groups or something they'll fight over something one man in the crowd apparently did linger a little longer than the others but even he took off before police had a chance to stop him and then there was one car car left and the driver kept getting out getting back and i think he was checking on the guy that was shot investigators have yet to say what the motive in the deadly shooting might be but it's not what people who live near the graveyard expected to see this is the sad reality of what we're going through right now well, to be absolutely honest, a lot of riders are telling me that they haven't had any problems on mass transit, and they're not really concerned about their safety. But I'll be able to tell you this. More and more people are coming up, and they're telling me that they are concerned, and they're concerned about the changes they're seeing. I love public transportation, but I never feel unsafe, really. There's always been a few people that, you know, you, you kind of want to stay away from. There's always been a few people that you kind of want to stay away from. The codes, these. Y'all are supreme, man. Why y'all talking in codes, man? Y'all are supreme. These people, we, we, you know, good thing that you guys here know how to decode what these gliders are saying, but Jesus Christ. It's got to be a tough way to live, man. <laughs> Country founded by your forefathers, and you can't even... <laughs> you can't even talk about it. You can't even... <laughs> like, blink if you're in trouble. Like, Jesus Christ. There's always been a few people that, you know, you, you kind of want to stay away from. So many riders tell us they're not worried about their safety on Link Light Rail or King County Metro Bus, and they haven't had any major problems. <laughs> Student and medical office manager Lauren Keat was taking Light Rail today. She says there are limits as to where and when she'll take it. I don't necessarily love riding at night, and I try and avoid downtown at night. The recent attack on a nurse at the Pioneer Square Station. Who that, man? Who that that attack that nurse, man? <laughs> Who's that attacking that nurse? Pushing her down the steps and attacking her, man. The recent attack on a nurse at the Pioneer Square station concerns a lot of people. Alicia Wright says she's taking light rail less. With the late reports about um, the attacks at the Pioneer Square station, even during the day, I won't go to that area. Flight attendant Lauren was taking light rail this week when this happened. I was on the train going to the airport and a man came on the train at the stadium station and started throwing milk on the passengers. It drenched another airline employee. On social media, at Riding Rapid D-Line posted, fights, 
threats, open drug use. It seems to be getting better in the past few weeks, but the bus is worse than light rail. King County Metro issued this response. Since last summer, in response to increased concerns on board coaches, Metro increased its security personnel development, specifically focusing on routes with high reports of incidents. The safety of our riders is our top priority. King County Metro says it's hiring 50 more transit security officers for 24-7 coverage and support. We asked about the number of complaints filed. Metro says there were 35 passenger physical alterations in January of this year. That number is down from 40 in January of last year. Tonight, outside the Westlake station, we count seven sheriff's deputies patrol units. We don't know if this is normal, but it's definitely a strong law enforcement presence. So we okay, sisters, do you see that? <laughs> the, the, the pasty liberals, they got it. <laughs> they got the memo, man. Um, pasty liberals got the memo. But I want to talk to you sisters, man. Um, this is what it takes, man. To just keep it under control. This ain't going to stop it. People are still going to be getting attacked and terrorized and robbed and randomly punched and slashed. and All that stuff is still going to go on. But this is what it takes to just keep it respectable. Like, to keep it in just a normal range. Okay, sis? Cause cause I'm starting to see the the the, the pasty limbs starting to get the memo, man. You sisters is just <laughs> this what it takes, man. Without this <laughs> Hey, this is what it takes. This is what you're gonna have to have in your community, sisters. You're going to have to have that presence in your communities. I know you don't, they going to kill, they just going to come around and they going to kill every son man. They going to go around shooting son man for no reason. I know, I know, sis, I know. Yeah, we get it. Your son, your baby, they just going to attack your baby for no reason and kill him. They gonna, it's going to be 8,050 million Cop murders and <laughs> but this is <laughs> you gotta do something, sis. <laughs> Tonight, outside the Westlake station, we count seven sheriff's deputies patrol units. We don't know if this is normal, but it's definitely a strong law enforcement presence. So we check back in with Sound Transit, and they tell us that this year there have been 27 phys physical passenger assaults. Um, Involving link light rail trains, and last year there were 84. Now keep in mind there are 1.5 million passenger boardings every month. Live in Seattle, Suzanne Fawn, Como News. And we want to hear from you. A Como News poll asks if you feel safe riding public transportation in the Seattle area. At last check, 15% of you said yes, compared to. <laughs> and you see who rides the train, right? And you know who's doing the attacking, who's the nuisance, who's the problem. Okay? 85% said they don't feel safe. Does this look like supremacy to you? What type of supremacy is this? <laughs> like, not for nothing, man. This is the worst attempt, the worst form of supremacy ever, man. Like, don't y'all know y'all supreme over them? Y'all hunting them? Y'all institutionally and systematically uh, hunting them and microaggressing them and all this stuff. How, how could this? How, how could both things be possible? Let me tell you something, mate. Let me be supreme. It wouldn't be none of this. <laughs> 
I would feel 100% safe, man. My people, if 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 I was so called supreme and and ran the institutions and the systems, I would be one hundred percent safe, my people. I promise you that, man. One hundred, one hundred percent safe by any means necessary. I was supreme. And we want to hear from you. A Como News poll asks if you feel safe riding public transportation in the Seattle area. At last check, 15% of you said yes, compared to 85% who said no. If you want to vote, just look for the poll on the Como News Twitter page.